Hey everybody, this is going to be my next iteration of a Dota Fundamentals video. And even though we've kind of like gone a little bit past the laning stage, we need to like rewind and update some of my old CS trainers as something I've mentioned in recent videos numerous times is that I've discovered from other players a new way to effectively time your CS way better. And it's gonna take some getting used to from you guys, but I assure you without a shred of doubt in my mind that this is the best way to CS after experiencing it for a short period of time. It single-handedly has made me a decent mid laner and I'm also just getting an extra three to four CS every laning stage. Banana slam jam. So first off, we need to go to your settings, go to the options tab and turn this right click allies to attack. First and foremost, that's what you need to do. Secondly, you need to have auto repeat right mouse on. These two settings are absolutely crucial in order to utilize the mechanic that I want you guys to drill out. So let's go ahead and go to the learn tab where I go every single day at the start of my stream. Last hit trainer. And we're just gonna choose a hero with an awkward wind up. Okay, and that's why this is so important. It, it applies to literally any hero that has a windup. There's very few that don't, Sniper being an example of one that doesn't. But any hero that has an, an animation where they attack with, this is a very important thing to do. So this is the creep here, and this is what it looks like. A pox upon you. I'm tagging this creep. What a lot of rot. So basically what you see is my hero basically having a spaz attack where he's like attack, 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 attack. And so the reason why this is so important is that when you're in contested lanes or there's a lot of sources of damage like towers, bunch of creeps, even just like enemy heroes hitting creeps, there's a lot of things that can potentially vary that you're not ready for. Somebody aggros, somebody randomly attacks a creep. And if you're not ready for these things or in general, you normally see us like just with a click or right click without stop spam, then you will not be able to react in time to whatever's happening because a hero's windup being even just as short as it is but still long enough to prevent you from being able to react is just too much. So in the past we did CS trainers where you learn to A stop A. This whole idea of A stop A was to basically like say I want to kill this creep. You know I'm going to be denying this creep next. We trained you to focus on which creeps were going to die next such that you could learn to face them because we want to remove turn rate on your hero. If you don't do A stop A then you have to turn around to CS the creep like that. And while you can still time it, it adds the turn rate to the t amount of time between the when you issue the attack and when you actually get the CS. So first and foremost, back to old videos, we need to do A, stop, right? You need to be facing the creep. You can do right click stop too. I just, I think it's nice to do A, stop. So now where the new mechanic comes into play. Fact is, you don't need this new mechanic in casual CS trainer because there's pretty predictable stuff going on. The only time it really matters in CS trainer is when there's a range creep attacking uphill and you need to adjust whether or not you attack based on if it misses. But at the end of the day, you need to iron it out here, otherwise you'll never get it in your games. So the whole idea of combining A stop A with the hold down right click spam stop is that you're removing turn rate and you're removing your hero's wind up. So the way this conceptually works is that you have faced the creep that you want to attack. And now, okay, so you're gonna hold right click, which means your hero's going to attack it, okay? And the setting for right click allies to attack allows you to use this on denies as well. And then you're gonna be spamming your stop key. Default is S, you may have changed it in your settings. You're gonna spam your stop key and your attack instead of becoming issuing an attack is actually you not telling your hero to stop. Now that seems weird, but it's actually removing the backswing of your hero when it comes to the timing of your CS because your hero is constantly backswinging, just waiting for you to not tell him to stop, right? Your hero's like spamming his backswing. And your timing, like especially under tower here where in that specific example, I had to attack between the tower shot and the range creep. Otherwise it was too late. That's really hard to time without this mechanic. I promise you guys. One more time on this creep. 
And basically this took me approximately two weeks of like 10 minutes of CS Trainer every day to get it down. By no means is it hard, meaning just some drills, literally do this at the start of your day of Dota, say you play two games, one game, whatever, just do 10 minutes of this. It, it matters for all core roles. I would argue it even matters for supports whenever your cores leave and you have to farm, pick up waves under towers and stuff, you will farm just way better. Um, missing those precious CS on supports can be quite crippling, quite crippling as well. So yeah, I just run through CS Trainer once or twice a day. You you know, 10 minutes. So, and I just making sure that I am using the right click hold, stop, you know, just over and over. And my next goal of when I'm doing this, once I've gotten kind of used to the mechanic of it, is understanding that in the game, a lot of your CS are contested. So the whole idea of my early CS trainer videos was that I need you guys to learn how to manipulate the lane equilibrium. Okay, like I need you to learn how to keep it where you want it. Because if you can't keep the lane equilibrium stable in CS Trainer, you're not gonna be able to keep it stable when you're laning against two heroes. That's just how it goes. So we're not really focused on this drill on keeping lane equilibrium at all. We're actually focused on not keeping it if possible. And the on top of that, we want to last hit the creeps as close as possible to the moment that we would be able to CS them. Now that may seem obvious, but what I'm saying is if I hit for 53 damage like I do on Necro, I'm not waiting until the creep has about 20 HP and I'm guaranteed to get that deny. I'm trying to CS it right around 53 HP, you know, right like as close as possible. So if there's an enemy hero trying to deny the creep in an actual game, that I would be able to time it better to prevent them from getting that deny. So this is something that I'm still working on on various heroes. Like every hero is different. You have to kind of get used to the damage numbers and all that kind of stuff. But really encouraging this perfect timing once you've proven to yourself that you can get like 90% plus CS if you're just purely going for the CS and purely keeping lane equilibrium. Once you've kind of proven you can get around 85 to 90% on most heroes, this is needs to be your focus because at the end of the day, I when I do last hit trainer in the mornings now or like the start of my streams now, I don't actually focus on making sure I get every single CS. I'm trying to be as close to that zero second window of like perfect when I was supposed to get that creep as possible. So like with this creep, I'm not gonna wait till it goes super low. I'm not gonna just do that. You know, that one was easy to make sure I got it. This one too. Um, I could wait until these two melee creeps hit it like ultra low like that and get it. I wanna get this creep as close to the moment that I could get it as possible. Like right there. I'm trying to launch my attack when that range creep's already launched its own. You know, I'm trying to land it right after that range creep that puts it in CS threshold, like right there. You know, that's really close, and I don't mind being close. I'd rather miss it being close than get the CS without pushing my limits, okay? Um, so, like, some of them you can't really do that, like, with that one. But the whole idea is that I don't mind actually missing them. I'm trying to get them as close to the threshold as possible. And once we've kind of accomplished that, then this drill is effectively over. So these two things alone are going to be big for you. Um, when it comes to denying this range creep... The reason why the right click repeater, right click auto attack deny is so important is because if I'm spamming a click on that creep, I can just tell you, you don't have the time to launch an attack because the creep, the majority of the time was above 50% HP. And so by the time you've a clicked it because you were waiting for it to be below half, your heroes waited too long to launch an attack. So when you're trying to get denies under tower, especially on range creeps against your opponent, holding the right click on the range creep as it's above 50% is super important to doing so. It almost always gets you the deny if the opponent messes up the timing at all. And you'll realize you'll get an extra two or three denies on range creeps under towers in your lanes per game. Very noticeable. So this part right here is a great example that I didn't know was going to come up. But yeah, guys, uh, this is fundamental video all about maximizing CSing. And I'm just telling you guys, I've gained like 900 MMR in the last three months really being on the grind. And I would say half of that is from revamping my laning stage CSing. Um, just trying to keep up with all the zoomers that have like, you know, come up with better ways to CS noticing I was kind of just like losing out to really good laning players. And this is what they're doing. It really is. So get in this habit. You can do it on melee heroes as well. The whole, any hero with a windup, it works. It just doesn't work if the hero doesn't have a windup, a gyrocopter, sniper, etc. Thanks for watching guys. Like, comment, subscribe. See you later.